Son, the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. May the Lord bestow upon us His blessing, grace, mercy, and wisdom now and ever into the age of all ages. Amen. If you would like to follow along with us, we have Bibles, I believe, here. Um, we're in which book? Anyone know the book that we're in? <laughs> we're almost done with it. St. <laughs> Paul's Epistle to the Philippians, and we're in chapter 3. Okay? <coughs> um, so, <clears throat> just to get, I know we've been giving an introduction almost every week to the chapter, but just a few points. Where did St. Paul write this epistle? From, in prison. Very good. And was it towards the beginning of his ministry or the end? More towards the end. Okay. Um, it's important to know that because St. Paul develops his, um, not theology, but his style and his... Um, <clears throat> You can see St. Paul developing as an apostle, even though he was one of the greatest of the apostles. But the, the, the depth and the quality, um, uh, or I should say the focus, not the quality, because all of it is, is, is very uh, beautiful. Um, but the, the things that he focuses on at the end of his ministry are, are slightly different than what he uh, focuses on the beginning and it also depends on the church uh, or the audience that he is speaking to. Um, <clears throat> the theme of the chapter, remember one word? Yeah, joy. joy, very good. Okay, and it's although it's a very short epistle compared to the rest, it's filled with many powerful and blessed verses and phrases even sometimes so deep um, it takes a life of contemplation to, to just begin to scratch the surface of what St. Paul is talking about. Um, and uh, So today we'll read a passage. I believe we finished um, chapter 3, verse 9. And so um, we'll attempt to complete the chapter. Um, <clears throat> but if, if not, we have we have time to continue. So I'll just read um, from, from verse 10 on, and then we'll talk a little a bit, a few points. I'm trying to keep, take my own advice. I'll be brief. <laughs> I'll try to have a few words um, for today. Um, <clears throat> so again, we're in Philippians chapter 3, verse 10. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, and God. Amen that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being conformed to his death, if by any means I may attain to the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already attained or am already perfected, but I press on that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, let us as many as are mature have this mind. And if anything you think otherwise, and if anything, sorry, and if in anything you think otherwise, God will reveal even this to you. Nevertheless, to the degree that we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule, let us be of the same mind. Brethren, join in following my example, and note those who so walk, as you have us for a pattern. For many walk, of whom I have told you often, and now tell you even weeping, that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, and whose glory is in their shame, who set their mind on earthly things. For our citizenship is in heaven, from which we also eagerly wait for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lowly body, that it may become formed to his glorious body, according to the working by which he is able even to subdue all things to himself. The grace of God the Father be with us all. Amen. So, <clears throat> um, as St. Paul often does in his epistles, he'll start with, with a, a theological message, or the general um, uh, teaching that he wants to give, and then he ends uh, oftentimes his epistles with the pac practical application. Um, and uh, the, this epistle is not an exception to that, and oftentimes it's almost 50 50. He'll focus a lot on important teachings, and then he'll, he'll go to the, the day to day life and say, This is how we should apply it, um, <clears throat> or what he was just talking about. This is how we, it should look like in the life of the Christian. Um, <clears throat> so like we said, the theme of the epistle is joy, and um, 
Most of the epistle has to do with how can the Christian live a joyful life in the Lord. Because um, as with this epistle and uh, the epistle of the Ephesians, uh, I think Mark was telling us a while back, how can we tell what the theme is of these epistles? What is a good uh, a litmus test? If you, if you want to know what someone is talking about, how can you tell? <laughs> if they're saying a lot of things. <laughs> hmm? Yes. So you look at a lot of the words and phrases that they repeat. Because if they keep repeating it, then it's important and it's falling in line with the main message uh, of what they're going to say. Okay, so that's why if you look at even the number of times that St. Paul repeats joy, it's, uh, I, have, I don't have the numbers here, but it's a lot in just you know, a, a handful of chapters. Um, so that's one thing that he repeats. And another thing that he repeats in this epistle and the epistle of Ephesians is um, in the Lord or in Him or in Christ. Or, um, this phrase is... Uh, is a mystery in itself. Um, just like uh, we were talking with the kids today, um, the theme of their retreat is uh, when the Lord Jesus Christ says uh, towards the end of the Gospel according to St. John, and we read it in the third hour of the, the Gospel of the Agbeya, He says, Abide in me and I in you. Um, <clears throat> so how can we live a joyful life? The, the first point is to be in Him. <laughs> <laughs> to abide in Him and He to be in us. And, and that's why um, St. Paul says uh, here that I may know Him. Uh, we have kind of have to stop at this phrase because it's very weird in a sense that St. Paul is using this phrase. Like after the 20 uh, years or so of service and after the 30 or so years after being baptized and converted and knowing Christ and after the maybe 60 or so years of actually studying the Old Testament and being an expert in the law um, to the point of uh, being blameless I don't know if you talked about this last time um, but uh, and we'll get to it in, in, in a minute. But St. Paul gives a summary of how great he was as a Jew. Um, and then at the end he says, it doesn't mean anything. <laughs> we'll get to it in a minute. But after that he says, even though I was an expert in all of these things, he says, I still need to know him. And I still need to know God. Um, <clears throat> so the, the first point is, uh, if we are very Christ-centric in our life, and in our attitude and in our mindset, then we will have um, the, the mind of Christ and we will be filled with the joy of the Lord. <clears throat> so um, the focus here is on knowing Him and being with Him and being like Him. Um, I was talking to uh, one of the priests uh, a while back and he was saying, um, he's been a priest for a lot of years, but he said, my first year, that uh, my, my father of confession told me um, to focus all of my sermons the first year on Christ. I said, how did you do that? <laughs> uh, actually, it's very easy um, because all of, all of our life should be centered around Him. And everything that we think about and talk about and uh, live should have some relationship with Christ. If we call ourselves Christians, we should have a relationship with Him and we should bring Him into our life. Um, as he brought us into him. Um, <clears throat> but if we just go a few uh, verses uh, before chapter uh, verse 10, um, St. Paul, in a sense here, gives his CV. He gives his, a summary of his um, uh, resume, if you will. Um, and of course, it's not, he does this in more than one place for different reasons. But here, um, we'll see why he, he does it. So first, we'll, we'll read the same chapter. Um, I don't know if you spoke about it last time or not. Um, but from chapter 3, verse 5, he says, um, 
or we'll start with verse 4. He says, Though I might have confidence in the flesh, if anyone else thinks he may have confidence in the flesh, I more so. He basically is saying, you think you're a good Jew? I'm better than you. <laughs> uh, he says, he's talking about the flesh, like the, the works of, of the body. He says, I was circumcised on the eighth day according to the law, just like the Lord Jesus Christ was, and just like the law said. Uh, of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin. So I, I have a lineage that is well respected um, by, by the Jews. <clears throat> um, a Hebrew of the Hebrews. Basically, you know, <laughs> he's... Uh, he is the perfect uh, Hebrew. Concerning the law, a Pharisee, because the Pharisees were, uh, did everything to the, um, to the T in terms of the written law and what they had to do uh, day in and day out according to uh, the five books of the Old Testament, the first five books of the law. Concerning zeal, persecuting the church, because um, it is one thing to believe, but according to them, if they were persecuting the Christians, then they, as Jews they were on the right track because they thought that the Christians were going against the, the true faith. And it, of course it turned to be the opposite. So, um, and then he said concerning the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. This was the highest level that anyone could attain um, of, of being able to follow the law. Um, every verse that was written uh, in the Old Testament. <clears throat> and then after he says this, he says, it, it's trash. <laughs> he says, but what things were gained to me, these I have counted lost for Christ. I count all things lost for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ. So he says, I need to know Christ, and I've done all these things, but it's nothing compared to knowing Him. And I'm still beginning to learn uh, to know Him. So this feeling we all have to have um, in our uh, spiritual struggle because if we feel like we have attained something guess what <laughs> we didn't well, the only thing that we attained is pride um, <clears throat> um, so here st. Paul is not looking at the problem but he's looking at the solution he's not looking at the problem of sin but the solution in Christ um, and uh, that's why he says I need to know him and the power of His resurrection and the fellowship of His suffering being conformed to His death. Um, why? So I can attain the resurrection from the dead. Um, <clears throat> and that's the second point, is that like when we recite the creed, do we chant it or do we say it? We say it, except for the last sentence, right? We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the coming age. Um, so that's another thing that we have to ask ourselves. Are you looking, number one, for Christ, that I may know Him? And number two, are you looking for the power of His resurrection? Uh, <clears throat> is it something, like, this is hard, you know, to, to put into practice, but then we have to ask ourselves, how often do we think about the resurrection? Or how often do we think about eternal life? Or how often do we think of what's coming after um, uh, we die? <clears throat> um, and uh, a simple question we can ask, you know, we, we search for many things, you know, online, right? How many of us have Googled resurrection from the dead? <laughs> I, I just did it yesterday because I had to <laughs> ask you, right? But very rarely do we actually search or think about the heavenly things. Um, but St. Paul is saying we have to put this in our lifestyle because if we don't, then we're going to get, you know, kind of like when you're um, planning a trip uh, and, and you book the ticket, but you have no idea where it is and what the weather is like and what the language is and what you're going to do there. Like, you're going you're gonna to waste the whole time and you're not going to enjoy the trip. It's going to be <laughs> miserable for you. Um, <clears throat> so that's... The, that's something that we have to take care of because even if we do get to heaven, we might not enjoy it if we're not looking forward to it. That's why some people say, um, why is God being um, so harsh to the people who are not allowed into heaven? Well, simply for those people, even if they got into heaven, it would be hell for them. <laughs> why? Because what are we going to do in heaven? We're going to be close to the Lord. We're going to praise God. We're gonna, going to rejoice in Him and learn more about Him and, and the heavenly life. For the person who has lived their entire life 
not doing any of these things or not happy to do any of these things, it's going to be miserable for them. Um, so that's why we have to take what we say um, in the creed uh, to heart. Um, we have to look for the resurrection. We have to look forward to it and, and um, contemplate uh, about, about it. <clears throat> so that's the second point. That, the first point, again, that I may know Him. Second, that I may know the power of His resurrection. Not just the resurrection, but the power of it. Um, <clears throat> and the third thing is the fellowship of His sufferings. Well, why did He say the resurrection before the Passion? I mean, obviously, it, if, if you're going chronologically, you talk about the Passion, and then the death, and then the resurrection. But here he's saying, he's putting the resurrection first. Um, why? Because we have to see the end in the beginning. Like, we have to see our goal before we um, struggle. So if you tell a child, um, <clears throat> just study, go and do your homework. Why? Because I said so. <laughs> right? Versus, if you do your homework, you're going to get a good grade, and then you're going to get into this school, and then you're going to be able to do this as a job. So we put the goal in front of them to encourage them to suffer <laughs> or to work hard. Right? So that's why um, uh, St. Paul says, first I need to know him, second I need to know what's coming at the end, and then that would encourage me to join in partaking of the sufferings, or the fellowship of the sufferings of Christ. So I could be conformed to His death, because if we're, I'm conformed to His death, I'll also be like Him in His uh, resurrection. <clears throat> um, so it's hard to love the cross if you don't see the power and the joy and uh, the uh, blessings of the resurrection. Um, <clears throat> and even when we, when, when we go through Passion Week, we have this in the beginning of our mind. Why? And that's why the church puts what day before we celebrate the Passion Week. Two, two days before the Passion starts, if you remember. It's just a couple months ago. <laughs> so I, I, we have the last Friday of Lent, and then we have Lazarus Saturday, right? So here again the church puts the end in the beginning because Lazarus rose from the dead not the same as the resurrection of Christ but the church is saying this is the end intended for you and, and it, if you uh, long for it as the graduation then you will be willing to endure the tests and the trials through the Passion Week and uh, having the fellowship of his sufferings <clears throat> um, and this is why St. Paul also says in the Hebrews, he says, we look unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. So regarding our faith, he wrote the book and he is the one who completed it or, or lived out the book for us, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. So the joy that was set before him was not only his resurrection, but our resurrection as well. And that gave him so much joy. He willingly and joyfully took up the cross to suffer for our sakes. <clears throat> um, uh, and so this is what we have to put as a goal in our minds more and more because then the suffering will become uh, easier to bear. Maybe not easier in general, but uh, more joyful uh, for us. <clears throat> um, so if we want power of the resurrection, and power from the Lord, um, and power over sin, and power to heal anything that is broken in our life, um, then we have to endure the fellowship of His sufferings. But it doesn't just say the cross of His sufferings, like because we're partaking in something that the Lord has already went through for us. So, um, and we're not suffering alone. We're, we're joining into His uh, sufferings. So He never leaves us. Yes, He suffered alone in the beginning for us, and the disciples fled. Um, and in a sense, yes, He felt um, there was no one else who could, who, who could join Him in, in, in that suffering. Um, but for, our, for us, we, we always have um, a, a confidant or someone who, who is with us in the midst of our suffering. Uh, the Lord who suffered for us. <clears throat> um, so uh, that's the, the the third point. We said the first one again is to, that I may know Him, right? <laughs> the second one 
the power. I, I, okay, I could tell I, I've been speaking too much. <laughs> okay, so number one, that I may know him. Number two, the power of his resurrection. And number three, the fellowship of his sufferings. <laughs> okay, hopefully we'll just get those points before we finish uh, today. Um, <clears throat> and the last point, like I said, I'm going to finish uh, soon. The last point is what St. Paul says um, uh, in the beginning, and we already kind of uh, covered it. Um, he says in verse 12, Not that I have already attained all the things that I did perfectly as a Jew is nothing, um, or I'm already perfected, but I press on, that I may lo lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting the things which are behind and reaching forward to those which are ahead. I press toward the goal of the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. So, simply, even in the world, if you look at some of the most successful people, do they just invent something and sit back and say, I did it, good for me, <laughs> end of story? The people who do that, what? You don't hear about them anymore. <laughs> the, the real uh, inventors or the leaders in the field are always pushing themselves, forgetting about what they have already um, accomplished or at least building on top of it. And these are the forerunners uh, in, 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 the, in their fields. And this is why what makes, like even if you decipher the life of almost every saint we have in the church, they had the same spirit. Um, <clears throat> They didn't look at themselves and say, I did a good job so far. <laughs> um, I can rest now. No, they're like, I, I actually forgot what I did and I need to start uh, and, and continue uh, further. I'm still very far. Like one of the fathers is contemplating what St. Paul might have been um, tempted with. Like maybe the devil came to him in a sense and said, Oh, Paul, you're so great. You Look how many churches you started. You know, you stayed in Ephesus for three years. You converted thousands of people. Uh, <clears throat> and he said, No, 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 I still need to visit Spain. I still need to go to Rome. Um, I still need to worry about my own salvation. Um, I, I'm very far from what I need to do, I need to talk to this person, I need to uh, build this church, I need to correct this. So he was always pushing himself um, higher and higher in, in his own spiritual life and in the lives of those around him. Um, uh, even one of the saints, um, w one of uh, the desert father, Saint Arsenios, we call him you know, the, the teacher of, of the kings, sons of kings, because uh, he, he discipled not just many of the monks, but many of, like Saints Maximus and Demetrius, who left uh, the kingdom to, to learn at his feet. <clears throat> but anyway, uh, after many years of being an elder and growing in the spiritual life and showing many people the life in Christ, especially uh, to live as a monk in the desert, which was the most rigorous um, of, of any type of lifestyle probably then and now uh, he was overheard in his prayers saying um, let me find the, the words exactly uh, yes he, he was saying um, one, one day some of his brethren it's mentioned in the paradise they heard him crying to God saying oh God do not abandon me. I have done nothing good in your presence, but in your goodness, put it in my power to begin. So like, you know, after I don't know how many years, maybe 80 or so years, you know, of, of uh, living a righteous life, he's, please, he's saying, please, Lord, help me start in my spiritual life. Um, of course, we, we can't really understand, you know, how, but he meant this uh, wholeheartedly. And this is, this is the mindset of of the uh, rejoicing Christian who is victorious um, in, in their life. They feel like they haven't accomplished anything and they need to, to begin to start. <clears throat> it's just like if you're running a marathon, you don't run backwards and say, look look how, how far I've come, <laughs> right? You're looking towards the prize um, or towards the goal with determination uh, saying, no, I still have a lot left. I'm not going to relax until I cross uh, the finish line. Um, <clears throat> and he doesn't look around, but he, he looks straight, or she looks straight ahead 
um, uh, just with, with blind, blinders on their sides. Just like the horses um, we, that, that are put blinders on, on their sides so they can focus. We have to do this more in our life um, so that we're not distracted by the things of the world and our eyes are set on the prize of the upward call of God in Christ. Um, <clears throat> and uh, this is, this is the, the last point, uh, which is actually the point that we said in the beginning. For St. Paul says, our citizenship is in heaven, from which we also eagerly wait for our Savior. We look for the resurrection of that. He's eagerly waiting for the resurrection. Um, <clears throat> who will transform our lowly body, here's the transfiguration, is transform our lowly body that it may be conformed to his glorious body. Because if we were conformed in his death, we'll also be conformed in his resurrection and his glory. According to the working by which he is able even to subdue all things to himself. Um, and, and basically this is the formula for uh, living a joyful life uh, in the Lord. So to summarize, we said, number one, that I may know Him. Not know myself, but if we know Him, we'll know ourselves, we'll know others, we'll know everything that needs to be known, because in Him is everything. <clears throat> and all things consist in Him. <clears throat> so number one, that I may know Him. Number two, that I may know the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings uh, very good uh, being conformed to his death and then the last point is that <clears throat> we press on not that we have already attained um, but we press on um, uh, forgetting the things that are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead uh, May the Lord give us the, the joyful life in Him, that we may know Him, his, the power of His resurrection, the fellowship of His sufferings, that we may be conformed to His death, and press on to the upward of call of the heavenly life in Christ, not just when we leave this world, but in this world as well. Glory be to God, now and for into the age of ages. So, <clears throat> we'll stand up. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Finally, Lord, we thank you again for everything concerning everything and everything. We ask for your blessing. For we ask for your joy and help us to focus on you, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him <clears throat> endured the cross uh, out of the joy to, to die for us and to be with us forever. Help us to grow in you and to strive for the heavenly kingdom, always putting the resurrection before us so that anything that comes in our life as an obstacle or as a sin or as something that tries to separate us from you will not be able to by any means, for your love is what conquers all. Through the intercession of the Holy Mother of God, St. Mary, the blessing of the Holy Apostles, and the blessing of the Holy Transfiguration, hear us and have mercy upon us and make us worthy to pray thankfully. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. In Christ Jesus our Lord, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. The love of God the Father, grace is only begotten Son, our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ. Creator and gift, fellowship, the Holy Spirit be with you. Go in peace and peace of the Lord be with you.